Hey y'all, it's Brittany and Caroline, hey. and we are playing a very, very, very fun round of Guess the Method. Very fun, Guess the Method. We love this game. If you're not familiar with the premise, shame on you. Just kidding, we just made it up. Okay, so Guess the Method is the game where we give blind cooks, not actually blind, just like they're cooking blind, um, a recipe name and an ingredients list, but we give them absolutely no method. So they have to, for the best of their ability, work to like backwards engineer these recipes. And today's recipe comes from the iconic Southern cookbook, Charleston Receipts. And before we get started, we do want to acknowledge some of the problematic <laughs> issues that surround Charleston Receipts. Um, if you don't know anything about this book, this is a cookbook written by, compiled by the Charleston Junior League in 1950. The first edition was released in 1951, and it's essentially um, the ladies of the Junior League of Charleston calling back to a time when white ladies didn't have to cook. Um, and that's essentially, you know, what we're looking at here. We're looking at a book that is sort of a, we're putting our heads down and we're being brave about having to get into the kitchen without having hired help cooks anymore. Um, and so we want to acknowledge the problematic nature of this book and uh, we want to acknowledge also the fact that most of our southern cuisine comes from the hands and backbreaking work of enslaved Africans. So without further ado, mm -hmm. our recipe today is called potato apples. Now Zach and April are making this recipe in their own kitchens. We're in April's kitchen now but Thank you, April. She, yes, thanks, April, for the space. Um, but they made this recipe without any direction. All they had was the name and the list of ingredients. Okay, today we're making potato apples. This recipe comes from Brittany. I think it's in Charleston Receipts. Um, so what do we have? All right, I have two potatoes, and it says for me to take the yolk out of this egg and put a little bit of water with it. There's no... Not really an acid in here. If I had, if I had an acid in there, like a vinegar or lemon juice or something, I could probably make um, like a mayo or aioli um, from from the egg yolk and the butter, uh, using the butter as the fat instead of oil. Um, but we don't have that. I've got black pepper, paprika, salt. Cloves, whole cloves, and some butter. I think that with some editing magic, April can make them appear like that. What I'm thinking is that given that this is Charleston receipts, um, this is coming from people who had used to have a lot of money and then they didn't after the Civil War. And they were used to people doing things for them and they didn't have that anymore. So. I'm imagining that they were missing apples. Right here, we have two different types of potatoes. I went ahead and got a russet potato. I'm going to um, try two different ways of doing this dish. And I just got uh, some red potatoes. I don't remember exactly what they're called. So let's peel up the potatoes. Just gonna dump that in there. What I'm going to do first is get these potatoes going in the water for their boil because that's going to take the longest. Um, I'm also going, before I even do that, go ahead and start preheating my oven. One thing that I do need to do, let's just go ahead and preheat the oven. I'm going to do it to 425. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do with this yet. <laughs> but as I peel, we'll preheat and we'll figure it out. Now, obviously, it would be best to get these all in as even pieces as possible, but I'm not going to beat myself up if I can't get them. So my potatoes, they look pretty bald to me. They're bald enough, and I think that was the goal. So got the potatoes peeled, and now we got to get the egg yolk yoked. Okay, so I've got my two red potatoes whole, and I've got my two russet potatoes sliced. I've got my Dutch oven already filled with some ice water. I'm just gonna throw these in here. I'm gonna 
put my lid on and I'm gonna turn that burner to high. We're just gonna do a little back and forth till we get this yoke out. Try not to break it. Try really hard not to break it. First, I think I'm gonna take a little bit of this uh, butter and put it in a little saucepan and melt it up because I might use it a couple different ways. It's said to add a little bit of water to dilute the yolk. I'm just going to get a fork and whisk this up. For one of the ideas I had that I've never done before is going to try to make um, a bit of a savory custard using the egg yolk um, and using some of that warm butter to kind of temper it and turn it into a custard. Make some sort of a mix of these spices that works out well. Yeah, I'm really confused about this because on one hand with the cloves, it looks like they're, and the butter, it looks like they're trying to do an apple dessert dish with potatoes, but then we're adding paprika and black pepper. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking probably what this process is, is that, that they would take the potato, cut them in half, so you got a half potato, and that then you would take some of these whole cloves here and stick them into the back of the potato and do a line down there. But I think that sounds gross to do it that way because the, the, the cloves are just weirding me out. Okay, we've got things mixed in a little bit. If you can see there, there's the focus. And I'm just gonna taste that. I'm gonna do it more like a little diced apple bake, I think. And who knows, maybe I'm actually right in doing that. But I don't like the idea of eating the whole chunky cloves. I don't know if you take them out whenever it's done or not. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get the coffee grinder and we're just gonna grind the cloves. I can almost guarantee you that this is probably the wrong thing to do, but I kinda don't care right now. Let's get our egg wash ready. Got my bowl, let's get um, another bowl. Just gonna crack an egg in it real quick. Throw my eggshell in my compost. I'm just gonna separate out this yolk. Gonna go grab a little bit of water. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of uh, whisk this egg yolk. Instead of doing the halves, like I think it's probably supposed to be done, I want some little diced up apple potatoes. <laughs> try to get them it'll be kind of even when you're baking you want your pieces to be even but I'm really not great at that all right I'm just gonna put this guy in my mixer I'm gonna turn it on low You need a little bit more than one egg yolk for this custard. Now that I've got all this diced, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take the egg yolk and mix it in with the potato. I'm just gonna very slowly pour in some of this uh, melted butter. We're gonna see what happens with it. All right, I've got it covered in the egg yolk and we're going to take some of our now ground cloves and 
Sprinkle a little bit of that. We got some cloves in there. That's enough. And then I'm going to put a little bit of pepper. And liberally salt it. Just want to mix that up. See how that's doing. Oh, I don't know if I want to taste this or not. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put a pinch of my little seasoning in there. Now we're going to use a cast iron. I thought about a casserole dish, but let's do the cast iron skillet because maybe, maybe that's more authentic. I don't know. And so we were not told how much butter to use. So what I'm thinking is first I'm going to lightly grease our skillet here with the butter. We're just going to line it. Not lightly, liberally. I've decided I changed my mind. Okay, my potatoes have drained. So now what I'm going to do is just take my egg wash and going to dip each potato in it. I decided I'm going to do both of the the red potatoes in the oven. Um, I just think they're going to cook better in there. Whew, these are still kind of hot. The russets, I'm going to split half and half between the oven and the air fryer. We're going to put our apple potato chunks. Here, we'll get them all. Get all of them right there. We're gonna put that in the skillet. And then we're gonna take a little more butter because more butter is better. So my oven has preheated. My air fryer is preheating right now. As soon as that's done, I'm gonna pop it open, throw in a few of these guys, and then throw this baking sheet into the oven. And then we're just going to kind of keep an eye on it. Probably go 20 minutes is my guess. Now that we got butter, we have not forgotten about our friend paprika. If I can get paprika open. All right, we're going to sprinkle a little bit of paprika over the top there. Okay. Here, let's just do a little more salt. Why not? One more salt. Okay, so I just checked in real quick on my potatoes and I'm not liking how they're looking right now. So I'm gonna call a quick audible and I'm just going to, based on some of this melted butter that I've got going. Okay, the air fryer is done now. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate this up because fries are always best served hot. So I'm going to give them just a Tiny bit of salt, like that. Ooh, look how that came out. Turned off the autofocus. What point on this? Look at that. It looks kind of like diced apples, I, I think. And so um, now I'm gonna cover over, cover it with some foil. So this stuff, it ended up being a um, very buttery tasting, which is not a bad thing, but I was going for more of the spice and uh, savory. It's a little tough when you only have a couple spices to work with, but yep. Oh gosh, I just spilled that in my water. All right, we've got Kara in here now. She's going to try the 
the russet in the air fryer with the little sauce that I made. And she hasn't been looking in on any of this. So they're still kind of hot. They look like french fries. Yeah, hold them up a little bit. So the, mm -hmm. They look good. What's this? This is a little sauce that I made for it. It's a, it's a buttery, it's a very buttery sauce. Hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah. They're thick. Yeah. They're good. I like them. Thanks. Potato apple? That's a, that's a potato apple. Eat it, I guess. All right, so it's been about 35 minutes and our potato apples have been in the oven. We're gonna take them out and see what we've got. Oh, the steam on my glasses. That's what we have. All right, well, I would say that they do look like little baked apples. And now we have the moment of truth where we're gonna see what they taste like. They're definitely, some of them are stuck to the bottom. They're soft. All right, let me let it cool because this is gonna be really hot. Okay, that's actually not bad. I was expecting way worse, but I think with all the butter and the salt, it's not bad. It even has a little bit of an apple texture. I would not just make this to make it, but I would say, I would say this, this turned out way better than I expected. So I'm interested to see what the actual process is. I'm interested to see what Zach did, but here we go. Here are my apple potatoes. Okay, so we have seen what April and Zach did in guessing the method. Um, I am 100% certain that Zach's gonna cheat his way through this. <laughs> yes. I am fully, fully prepared for Zach to have added in things that shouldn't be added in. I guess what we'll do, we'll dive right in. We're gonna, we're gonna boil our potatoes. We're gonna make a mashed potato. So what I like to do when I, when I boil potatoes for mashing is I like to cut them up as small as possible yeah. um, because then they'll boil quicker. Yeah. Um, so we'll just, uh, we'll make a mashed potato, a basic mashed potato in, in the way that we would. We're just not gonna make it yummy. I can just imagine that the most far off person for this recipe between Zach and April will be Zach. Yeah, for sure, um, for sure. Zach is an adventurer at heart. I always start my potatoes boiling in, in cold water stock um, and bring them up in that way. Um, just because, you know, it's kind of splashy everywhere and you're not gonna burn yourself. But uh, it also helps with um, not letting the potatoes release too much starch as well. So we'll start them on a coal, in a cold pan here and we'll just jack it on up. Give me a couple more minutes. Oh, we are so good to go. Let's go ahead and dump these. So I'm gonna drain these and then I'm also gonna run some cold water on them because yes. we want them to hold. Yes, we want them, yeah. So um, we'll go ahead and do don't that. don't want them to be too soft. No. Yeah, then we'll hit them. And then we'll mash them in the same pot. Yeah. We'll go ahead and get a pat. Let's <laughs> start with, yes, I think that's a great <laughs> idea. And then we'll salt it and we'll pepper them. Um, we wanna add some of add those. Some I, yeah, that looks good. And I think, I mean, I don't know if our goal here is to be as true to the demographic as possible, which means as bland as possible. Right. We are gonna go rogue with some paprika. This is crumbly. Here. It is a crumbly mash. Maybe, um, I mean, it doesn't say to do anything else to it. It just says to go for it. I don't want you to burn yourself. Well, um, I'm thinking this, this is quite moldable. Okay. It's soft, but it's moldable. All right. Um, I don't want it to get too hot. No, yeah, for sure. Um, I might get a spoon. Okay. I wonder if I could. I got you. Stir them together and go ahead and make them into, like, firm them into some <laughs> sort of. Okay. Okay. These are soft. Okay. 
quite soft. Do you think, yeah, I think we can have a bigger apple, right? Let's have a bigger apple. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. How did they do this? Yeah. The pot was still a little warm. Um, okay. It's still off the heat, but is it too hot to handle? No. Sorry? Okay. I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. Um, so Caroline's never done this before. Um, I've not. She's I'm never molded. <laughs> maybe <laughs> some more. Maybe just one yeah. big apple. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Maybe we just need to make one big apple. Well, here, let me get you a clove. Shake. You know, we might could could fashion. I think we're looking at two hefty sized apples. That's yeah. what I think we're looking at here. Because right. our potatoes are already cooked. I don't want it to break. Now, I am concerned about this egg wash. Again, I, I can't say this enough. Um, okay, there you go. That, Caroline, that looks like an apple. Let's put a little stem in her. I think we okay. can get two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I did get some potato in the egg wash. Oh, that's all right. It was a little crumbly. All right, I'll I'm just doing space. one side. Apparently. All right, so. This, of course, is like way too much egg wash. Oh, it's on top. Can it be too much egg wash? Do we know what that even means? Look at how it's soaking it's in. Soaking. Oh, <laughs> it's soaking in. Oh no. Yeah, this isn't acting like an egg wash would. You know, if you were making a, a, some kind of bread, like if you were good. making a, a pastry. Yeah, like. no, it is. It is soaking right into yeah. this. It's becoming potato. part of the apple. It. Oh boy. Maybe it's supposed to look like half of it's peeled and the other half it's not. Maybe. I just was not anticipating that it would soak right into the potato. Yeah. Well, we're just going to go ahead and uh, dust it. And dust it. Um, so, yeah, this is not a smoked paprika. This is just paprika. <laughs> um, I don't know how much they want. I don't know what they want to achieve other than color. Yeah. It's speckled. It is. <laughs> it looks great. As good as it can look, just go for it. It is breaking. The, the, the potato is. Well, I think we did our best. Now, I don't anticipate it browning up at all. Um, I will say that in the oven. I, it did not you specify what? what the oven should have been preheated to. All it said was to brown in a hot oven. Um, I don't think we're going to achieve very much by broiling it. And also, I want to cook this egg. If this was an egg white, I wouldn't be quite as concerned. But since this is the yolk, yolk. and this is where the salmonella lives, <laughs> if your egg has salmonella, please do not consume raw egg yolks. You're not rocky. You're not going to do anything good for yourself. We're putting it in a 350 degree oven, and I have no idea if that's correct. So we're off just they gonna go. Eyeball it. There we're going to we're going to do our best. Off they go. Off so here we go. go. Okay. So we have had our potato apples in the oven for I don't know how long like 15 minutes sure yeah we had them in 15, at 350 because miss <laughs> frost me. bless you miss frost did not tell us a temperature she did not tell us a time maybe there's just a standard cooking time temp maybe um but we're gonna go ahead yeah oh. we're gonna go ahead and take them out here um we broiled them for a few minutes um because they weren't browning <laughs> so yeah it's um very and quite the smell. It's still yellow. Oddly enough, they still aren't brown. They are. <laughs> okay. The egg wash. <laughs> huh. Let's let's turn it around so folks at home can see. Yeah. So the egg wash has maintained its color. They didn't. They moved kind of. They yeah. They seem to have collapsed a bit. Yeah. Um. All I smell is clove. It's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, if they just were a different color. Yeah. They're very pale. Very pale, like extremely pale. So what we were saying was these are essentially, I mean, it's just a mashed potato. It's a ball of mashed potatoes <laughs> that is yellow on one side and um, white on the other. So we've got to, unfortunately, um, we have to try these. So are you going to go for egg wash side or non -side? I think I am. I think I'm going to go in between. in between here. Oh, oh, well, it did form a crust. It did form a nice crust. Um, we got a nice seam. We know we're cooked yeah. through. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh, all right. Well, cheers. 
Ja, ich schneide. Das ist not good. Um, I just swallowed it immediately. It burned my tongue. Um, 10 out of 10 would not recommend. Um, that I is, mean, it just tastes like a potato. Yeah, but the mouthfeel of that egg wash the mouth feels not good. Mm -hmm. is not delightful. And honestly, like, the aesthetic of it's not. I mean, and I think that's what they were going for. I don't yeah. know why I'm going back for more. I, I mean, that's what they were going for. It is. That's all they were going for. It wasn't for and flavor. It's not, it's not there. No. I mean, even the paprika doesn't do anything for me. No. I probably should have put more. But, you know, a nice stroll down the kitchens of your yes, yes. um we've learned a few things we've had some laughs um zach cheated we already know this. um <laughs> zach is a cheater um april made a skillet hash <laughs> and uh, we made um mashed potato balls that are terrible <laughs> so i hope you guys will come back we're gonna definitely do more guess the method yeah we'll uh we'll we'll maybe be a little more adventurous next time I would say this is a tame, very tame, very tame. guess the method. It felt tame. Yeah, I mean, it's... The fun in this one was the fact that the potato apple was not at all what you would expect yes, a potato exactly. apple to be. But also at the same time, like exactly what you would expect a potato apple to be. <laughs> That's, That's very true. <laughs> um, we hope you enjoyed this. We hope you'll come back and see yes. us. And um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Get in your kitchens and make something yummy. Yeah. So we'll see you guys later. Thanks.